Hi, I'm Jesse. This is One Block at a Time, and this is Rutherford Place. Rutherford Place is a tiny street created as a result of Stuyvesant Square Park cutting through Manhattan's grid in a weird way. It's dominated by a church and a school, and while there aren't a lot of residences, you can tell that apartments on the adjacent streets are pretty darn pricey. It's so quiet on Rutherford Place that you can hear this woman's phone conversation down the whole block. Stuyvesant Square is named after Peter Stuyvesant, the last director general of the area as a Dutch colony, back when Old New York was once New Amsterdam. He owned the land in the late 17th century and built the original wall on Wall Street. His great-grandson, Petrus S. Stuyvesant, no confusion there, began carving the area into buildable lots in 1789. But it was a great-great-grandson, Peter G. Stuyvesant, you'll be quizzed on this, and his wife, Helen Rutherford Stuyvesant, who created the park. In 1836, they sold it to the city for $5. That's where the street's Rutherford name comes from. Stuyvesant Square Park is charming and calm, and you can tell it belongs just to the locals. Its flower garden has won some awards. Here's a sketch I did of some irises. The park also has one of those cute take-a-book-give-a-book libraries. Of course, a lot of people get books and shoes mixed up. Also, scotch tape and band-aids, naturally. So Stuyvesant Square has the oldest cast iron fence in the city. It's 2,800 feet long. So this is St. George's uh, Episcopal Church, built in the 1850s based on German church designs. I once heard a good friend of mine sing here in the choir. So this is the back of St. George's, and in the basement here is where I once gave a talk. Uh, they have like a big uh, hall, and uh, I wrote a book 10 years ago on the positive trends and current events and gave a talk here in the basement. Here's St. George's imposing clock tower. It has two huge spires which were removed in 1889 for reasons the internet would not divulge to me. J.P. Morgan attended here. He was once the world's richest man and people at the time called it Morgan's Church. The other hallmark of Rutherford Place is the Friends Seminary, run by the Religious Society of Friends whose members are known as Quakers. It's the oldest continuously running co-ed school in New York. It was founded in 1786 and moved to its current location in 1860. It also has an area for worship known as the Meeting House. The buildings were completely renovated in 2019. Now let's venture to the edges of Rutherford Place. It connects 15th, 16th, and 17th Streets. 15th Street has one apartment building with very cool 3D tree art in the lobby. It's really hard to see here in this Google Street View pic. Although it is pretty funny that Google blurred out a mask. 16th Street has this beautiful ivy-covered building next to the Quaker properties. Less peaceful is the playground in the back of St. George's. If there are any two design elements you always want in a good playground, it's metal and sharp corners. 17th Street is mentioned in Black Buck, a great satirical novel by a friend of mine, Matteo. In the book, the street is just treated as this obnoxiously wealthy location that stands in contrast to where Buck grew up. And yeah, that doesn't seem far off. Behind me is Landmark 17, a fancy residential building. Eric Clapton once lived there. The penthouse has glass ceilings and uh, outdoor hot tubs. Next door is East End Temple, Congregation El Amet, founded in 1948 by a group of World War II veterans. Inside sits an 1860 Torah from Czechoslovakia that was desecrated by the Nazis, but later rescued and brought to London, and eventually here. And then here's an impressive building also called Rutherford Place. It's located at the end of 17th Street, not on the actual Rutherford Place, so it's basically built on a web of lies. Originally a gift from J.P. Morgan to the city, it was used as a maternity hospital for decades. Now it's very expensive apartments and has housed celebrities including Dave Chappelle, Tom Cruise and Mimi Rogers, Judd Nelson, Chris Farley, Rob Schneider, Wesley Snipes, Sean Combs, David Lee Roth, and the two model daughters of Keith Richards. 
By that I mean his two daughters work as models, not that they are just perfectly well-behaved daughters. Although what well-behaved would mean to Keith Richards, I have no idea. Oh, and they're not related to me. Now let's get back to the park. So the park's named after Peter Stuyvesant, who you can see here is missing a leg. He has a, a wooden leg. Uh, an interesting story, so I've, I've walked past here, we live nearby, I've walked past this park a thousand times commuting to work. And a few years ago, my wife and I were on vacation in St. Martin. Now St. Martin is a little island in the Caribbean that's split in half between uh, the French side and the Dutch side. We stayed on the Dutch side and one day we were hiking really uh, way off the beaten path and we ended up on a cliff overlooking the bay. It was beautiful with these tall grasses and at the top of the cliff is an old abandoned fort, hundreds of years old, and a little pedestal, a little plaque and the plaque on the pedestal at the edge of the cliff says, this marks the spot where Peter Stuyvesant lost his leg by cannonball. Thanks for watching. This is one block at a time. Uh, like and subscribe. I appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.